The issue that we, have, that we face if we want to achieve that earlier access is that you have to have a way that manages that risk and manages the risks to the in a way that healthcare systems can actually both understand and do. And that's what MAPS, that's what the idea around the, 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 the MAPS concept is trying to achieve. Personalized medicine has grown since the mapping of the human genome in 2003. Everyone's been asking, when are these cures? When are these magic pills coming out? And we've seen an evolution from one or two targeted treatments a year up until um, last year, 2014, 20% of the new drugs approved by US FDA were personalized medicines. So we have to acknowledge that Europe is totally diverse, different, which is nice. But at the same time, this diversity might create different challenges into the different countries. And we have to make sure that everything that we are trying to achieve uh, then will be accessible and would be appropriate and would be implementable for many of the EU countries. Otherwise, we risk to actually deepen the inequalities and to, to, to create more inequalities in Europe. Early access is not simply about lowering the evidence threshold. As clinical trials and data progresses and data comes in, it becomes apparent there are certain patient subsets that are benefiting significantly. And, and this is where the personalized medicine comes in, in identifying those subgroups. Now, in the case of those patients, there's no lowering of the evidence threshold. You've just used new technology to identify those patients a lot earlier than you would have not done normally. So to make that clear, it's not a lowering of the evidence threshold necessarily. When we hear struggles about access and payment and fitting personalized medicine into the practice of medicine, they are all very important topics and topics that we face at um, Personalized Medicine Coalition. But it's important that we all recognize that science has changed. The science of drug development has changed. Things are moving so fast in, in my part of the world, which is tra translational medicine from the lab into the clinic. Um, and, and, and I'll show you that a lot of it is the excitement of, uh, of this new approach to looking after patients is trickling down to patients and they're getting agitated and excited. And we are really going to have to handle that as professionals. So uh, my bottom line is um, thank you everybody for coming and I hope you'll You'll get a little bit of the energy out of uh, this movement and you, you will go back to your jobs and you'll say, yes, we've got to do this and we've got to get a move on.